The general trig equation has this form, y equals a sine b theta plus c plus d. The trig function can be sine or cosine. In the two previous videos, we've shown that the a parameter tells us the amplitude of the graphed wave. We use the b parameter to tell us the period. Since period and frequency are reciprocals, the b parameter also tells us the frequency, and the d parameter is the midline of the graphed wave. The c parameter corresponds to a characteristic called phase. Now, in science and engineering, the word phase has over a dozen meanings, but for our purposes, it describes the horizontal location of a waveform, specifically with respect to another wave or compared to an initial position. For example, these waves are out of phase, but one can be shifted to be brought into phase with the other. In phase means the peaks and troughs line up, so in general, phase shift means a left or right adjustment to the entire wave. So, there are two questions to answer. What's the phase shift distance, or size, and what's the direction of the shift? The size of the shift is c over b. Let's write the general trig equation with only b and c parameters. y equals sine b theta plus c. When we let b equal 1, the phase shift is simply c, since c over 1 equals c. When b equals 1, we have y equals sine theta plus c. Let's graph this carefully next to a graph of y equals sine theta. We'll say c is pi over 6. So the equation we'll graph is y equals sine theta plus pi over 6. We'll start plotting points at theta equals 0, as denoted by the yellow arrow. Sine 0 plus pi over 6 is sine pi over 6, which is 1 half. Next, we'll let theta equal pi over 6. Sine pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is sine pi over 3, which is square root of 3 over 2. When theta equals pi over 4, we have y equals sine pi over 4 plus pi over 6. If you can do fractions in your head, you'll see this is sine 5 pi over 12, which isn't one of the common angles, but a calculator will tell us it's about 0 0.966. When theta is pi over 3, we have sine pi over 3 plus pi over 6, which is sine pi over 2, so 1. When we continue, we get these points and can draw this yellow curve representing y equals sine theta plus pi over 6. When b is 1, the phase shift is c, which is pi over 6. Here's a distance of pi over 6 on the horizontal axis. And yes, indeed, each yellow point is pi over 6 away from the corresponding red point. Adding a c parameter of pi over 6 results in a sine wave shifted horizontally by pi over 6. Now, let's change the b parameter to something besides 1. We'll say 2. y equals sine 2 theta plus pi over 6. So the b parameter is 2, and the c parameter is pi over 6. Let's graph this equation, again starting at theta equals 0. 2 times 0 plus pi over 6 is sine pi over 6, which is 1 half. When theta equals pi over 6, sine 2 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is sine pi over 2, which is 1. When theta equals pi over 4, sine 2 pi over 4 plus pi over 6 is sine 2 pi over 3, which is square root of 3 over 2. When theta equals pi over 3, sine 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is sine 5 pi over 6, which is 1 half. Continuing in this fashion, we plot these points which form this wave. Well, something looks unusual. We don't have a uniform horizontal shift from the red curve to the yellow curve. But let's consider that the period of our new curve is 2 pi over b, as we covered in TR-43. Since b is 2, the period is pi. Let's compress the red graph to have a period of pi. And now we can see a uniform phase shift of pi over 12, which is c over b, pi over 6 divided by 2. 
Another way to look at this is to consider this point on the unadjusted y equals sine theta curve at theta equals zero. The movement of this point, left or right, is the phase shift, and we find this point by determining the value for theta that makes the argument b theta plus c equal to zero. So let's solve b theta plus c equals zero for theta. Remember, theta is the variable, b and c are the constant parameters. Subtract c from both sides and divide by b. Theta equals negative c over b. If your instructor asks for the phase shift, the answer is negative c over b. Plug in c and b and multiply by negative one. So to be clear, for sine three theta plus two, the phase shift is negative two thirds. And for sine three theta minus two, the phase shift is positive two thirds. So when c is positive, the phase shift is to the left. And when c is negative, the phase shift is to the right. Before we solve some problems, let's do a quick check. For the plain unadorned equation, y equals cosine or sine theta, what are the a, b, c, and d parameters? I just don't want you to think that they're all one or all zero. The coefficients that are multiplied are both one, and the added numbers are both zero. So a and b are one, c and d are zero. Okay, let's solve some problems. Given an equation, you should be able to graph the wave. And given a wave, you should be able to determine the equation. Let's start with a wave and figure out its equation. It seems like it would be a difficult task, but all you need to figure out is the four parameters, one at a time. Since we're not using graph paper, I'm giving you a few measurements that you would be able to estimate yourself if you had a curve on graph paper. This point is negative 1.860 comma 1.9. This point is 0 0.996 comma 1.9. And the y-coordinate of these minimum points is negative 4.9. With just these numbers, we can find the values for parameters a, b, and d. Parameter c will take a bit more information, but we'll get there. Pause if you like to determine a, b, and d on your own. Start with the midline, the value for parameter d. It's the average of the maximum and minimum y value. y max is 1.9 and y min is negative 4.9. 1.9 plus negative 4.9, all divided by 2, equals negative 1.5. So d equals negative 1.5. The absolute value of the amplitude is y max minus d. 1.9 minus negative 1.5 equals 3.4. We need to decide whether parameter a is positive or negative. It looks like we can use a sine function with just a small phase shift, so the direction is the same as sine, so we'll say a is positive 3.4. To find the b parameter, we need to first find the period t, which is the peak-to-peak -peak distance t equals x high minus x low, so 0 0.996 minus negative 1.860, which is 2.856. This period t also equals 2 pi over b, so solve for b to get 2.2. To find the c parameter, we need to find the horizontal phase shift at the midline. Please note that this distance along the t-axis is not the phase shift. For sine, we measure the phase shift at the midline. This is an easy mistake to make. I know because I made it while preparing this example. Usually, you'll have the curve on graph paper, or your instructor will give you the coordinates of several points from which you can decide what to use, and you'll be able to figure out this distance. But I'll just tell you, it's 0 0.282, and we'll keep going. The phase shift is negative C over B. Solving for c yields negative 0.62, so substituting these parameters into the equation yields y equals negative 3.4 sine 2.2t minus 0.62 minus 1.5. Make sure the dependent and independent variables you use in the equation match the graph you're given. 
Now, suppose we're told to use the cosine function instead of sine. All of the parameters will be the same except C, because midline, amplitude, and period are all the same. So, let's find C. For cosine, the displacement is this distance. The distance the cosine's value at zero is shifted to the left or right. In this case, it's shifted to the right by 0 0.996. So the phase shift is negative C over B equals 0 0.996. B is still 2.2, so solving for C yields negative 2.2. Plugging these parameters into the equation yields Y equals 3.4 cosine 2.2 T minus 2.2 minus 1.5. As a reminder, here's the curve's equation using sine. Same curve, different trig function, so different C parameter, because the phase shift is different. Now, let's go the other way. Given an equation, sketch the sine wave. y equals 0 0.7 cosine 2.4x plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. The trickiest parts of problems like this are the period and phase shift, the two horizontal parameters. Amplitude and midline are easy. You can probably see the sine wave boundaries in your head. But we'll address the vertical parameters A and D last. Sometimes you'll be given a labeled coordinate system, which means you'll need to calibrate your sketch to match the coordinates provided. And sometimes you won't be given anything, so the scale between the independent and dependent axes can be whatever you find convenient. Let's assume we're given these axes. We'll work out the period first, the B parameter, then the phase shift, which is the C parameter, then the midline, and amplitude, the D and A parameters. Period equals 2 pi over B, and B equals 2.4, so the period is 2.6. We're graphing the cosine function, so before we apply the phase shift, there will be a peak at x equals 0 and another at x equals 2.6. The trough, or low point, will be midway between, at x equals 1.3. We'll sketch this curve lightly, since we're going to apply the phase shift next. The phase shift is negative c over b. Negative 0 0.5 divided by 2.4 is negative 0 0.21. I'm rounding everything to two decimal places, since that's all the precision we're given. We shift to the left by 0 0.21, so the peaks move to negative 2.1 and 2.4, and the low point shifts over to about 1.1. So, before the vertical parameters are applied, the sine wave looks like this. The midline is the D parameter, negative 0 0.3, and the amplitude is 0 0.7, so we can slide the graph down and compress it. And this is the graph of y equals 0 0.7 cosine 2.4x plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. I think it's easier to figure out the equation for a graph than it is to draw the graph of an equation, but that's only because there's so much erasing and redrawing when you sketch on paper. I cheated on the computer screen, moving and stretching the curve around, so be sure and practice with pencil and paper until it becomes easy. In the next video, TR-45, we'll move on to a new topic, polar coordinates.